Well, there's been a big event uh, happening up at the ShopRite car park, all to do with uh, the unveiling of this plaque. But I uh, had a chance to, to meet with Alex Downey, and we were thinking there's so many other connections. Uh, I mean, you've got lots of, uh, yourself, haven't you? Just with the old man, First World War, Second World War, uh, people now remembering all these things. They are, and it's good, it's good that people can remember because the Isle of Man played a very, very important role in both the First and the Second World War. Particularly in the Second World War, uh, the, what we're commemorating today with HMS St George was the training of th literally thousands of 16-year-old boys who were turned into men at a very, very quick rate. Uh, this was a very important training establishment. They needed young men as telegraphists uh, uh, to, to get involved in gunnery and all sorts of other aspects of the Royal Navy. Allied to this, there was another establishment down at um, where Manx Radio is, HMS Valkyrie. Okay. They've got a plaque like this as well, haven't they? They have, yes. Yeah. And they, they trained and developed radar there. Mm. And of course, the airport that we know today as Ronald's Way uh, was actually HMS Early. And that was taken over by the fleet air arm. And they trained pilots to be dive bomber pilots. And... Um, they had quite a, a, a tough time as well. Uh, what was sad for me, I came back here in 1990 when they had the last big reunion and uh, a lot of people were saying that the first two years intake, there's hardly anybody survived the war. Right. Yes, I, I, we're hearing the, not only the massive explosions on, on some of the vessels, wasn't it? Lots of the, the, the boys went on to the big capital ships, uh, cruisers uh, and battleships that were lost. Uh, ships like the, the, the Rodney, the King George V, where they had hardly any survivors at all. But, um, and, and there, are lots of, there are lots of happy stories to tell too, because a lot, lots of these young men were uprooted, they were, they were looked after here in the island, lots of them befriended local people while they were here, uh, they were allowed out for a bit of, bit of R&R, and, R. and um, I know my father used to recall lot, lots of uh, happy occasions and for years after, before he passed away, he used to still be in communications with them. I suppose it's a bit like a, a, a teacher in a school and keeping in touch with all his pupils. So your, your father got moved here during the war? My yeah. father got moved here in 1944, uh, just after the D-Day landings. Hence you were born here? Hence I was born here in 1945. <laughs> And uh, when we were young even, all of the facilities that the Navy had were here on the site. We used to come here and go swimming. Uh, the man who looked after the maintenance here was a man called Ernie Macon, who was an ex-Royal um, uh, Naval Artificer. And he'd spent a bit of time here during the war. He was friendly with my father. So virtually we had the run of the place. And when, when, the, when the war was over and Cunningham's camp started again, Douglas Holiday Camp, there were literally thousands of tourists here every week and it was, it was uh, three meals provided. They had the palm court, the ballroom, as I say, the, the yeah. swimming pool, gymnasium. It was, it was a huge complex. And of course, where the plaque is today, there was a fantastic chairlift yeah. that went down to the promenade. Health and safety would not allow that in this day and age because you had to hop on and hop <laughs> off. Do you remember that? Top. I'd remember going <laughs> on that many, many times when I, when I, was, a, when I was a young lad and, and thoroughly enjoying myself. But I've got lots of memories here uh, about this place and I think it's very, very fitting that the tribute has been made today to all those who served here. And people watching this back in hundreds of years' time, do you think they will still remember as much? Well, I, I, I think the, the, it's good that the present generation are actually taking an interest and I'm heartened by that because I uh, am a great uh, proponent of military history. Uh, I've done a lot of research over the years on both on the First and Second War and wars before that and it's amazing how things come round and the interest gets generated. My big uh, passion uh, which is Waterloo and Napoleon, that's 2015. So there'll be a huge reenactment in Europe and then we'll be bringing to life again what the Royal Navy did around the Isle yeah. of Man to keep the French at bay and pirates at the Battle of... Oh, my goodness. Uh, Battle of Thorough. I'm thinking it's taking a long time for this plaque to be put up. You know, it's almost now becoming better, isn't it? People are remembering more. 
It is, and, and I think what we're doing now, we're, we're looking at things going and we're saying, well, hang on, um, you know, 67, 68 years ago, this was a very important place in the Isle of Man. And I think while there's still a few of us here who can actually remember it and relate to it, it would be good to put a plaque on the wall and, and take an opportunity to just pay a little bit of respect to those who did give their lives. Um, a lot of people lost in the wars, people don't understand that. But um, it's good to remember them and it's also good to let people know that we're still very concerned about everyone who served in the forces today. And that's why I think there's been such a lot of support for uh, charities like Health for Heroes and, and so on, where people have actually gone on and put their, li their lives on the line and a lot of them have been badly injured and really need to be looked after.